everyone, welcome to video five of the new runner's knee pain video series. Today's video, we're gonna look at transitioning and increasing weight acceptance as we move from one foot to the next. If you haven't checked out videos one through four to correct the hip mobility, to reconnect the core, to work on spine stack positions and to work on rotary stability, either at the foot, the knee or the hip and, core, and the trunk, I would recommend go back through those videos, clean those things up before we start moving and transitioning because as we run it's important that we can control the forces through the foot to make sure the knee isn't collapsing and make sure we're not over rotating through the pelvis that's going to be, potentially cause some problems the first exercise we're going to work on is transitioning with a forward and reverse lunge we're going to come back with the band to work on some rotation control here. Start single leg balance and just very simply, nice step forward, push up, finishing that single leg balance. Now it's important that when we do this, the knee does not track inwards. We don't want that excessive torque happening through the ankle, the foot or the knee or the back pelvis. So it's important that we are mindful of how we're loading that up. If you want a little bit more of a challenge, press it out here. As you get up to this top position, it's gonna get a little tricky. You'll feel it in the hip, but it's just gonna keep you a little bit more honest. Then you can switch to the other side. Start maybe in tight, get a feel for it. Work on that single leg balance transition. Pop up, back down, up. And when you're reversing, make sure you push off the toes, just so you can get that knee extension, that toe point. It'll just help with propulsion. Again, bring it here. Play with some rotations. Surprise yourself, press it out. Okay. Moving into more of a hip hinge position. You get your band station in front of you. And we're just gonna simply get that leg back here to support you a little bit. If you want, you can get it straight up in the air, okay? But more importantly, we're working on that, that hip drive as well as that contralateral shoulder flexion with hip flexion. Okay? So as I pull, I'm doing shoulder extension or shoulder retraction with contralateral hip extension, working on that timing. If my timing isn't very good with the pull, I get very much pulled off balance. So it's a great exercise to work on timing and sequencing cross body. Switch to the other side, here. One side might feel a little bit more awkward just from not being a dominant, but once it's dialed in, feels pretty good. If you're uncomfortable, you can go to a single leg deadlift hip hinge, much more challenging, but we're just looking for that momentary balance position. If you got a kettlebell available, this is a great exercise to perform with a kettlebell in a front rack position. So we're going to work on that single leg balance. So working kind of this cross cord load, and we're just gonna drop into a reverse lunge. Come back up and into a forward lunge. If you can, hold that balance and come through. Not necessary. If you need to touch the foot down, that's okay. But the idea is working on that static control in the one leg and then transitioning to that front leg. Here to here. Of course, switch sides here to here. If you want to work on a little bit more power in that deep hip hinge position, we can come into single leg deadlift into a clean. Again, if you can hold the single leg position, great. That's awesome. Not super important, but nice if you can. If you need to put the leg down, that's fine. Lock it in, pop, touch it down. So we come back down, lift if you want, pop. Put it down. So this works really nice to get that timing of the hip drive, but also that stance leg is getting a lot of work to get ready for accepting impact with every step. Give these exercises a shot. The rep range we're looking for, if these are completely new to you, five repetitions with no fatigue is kind of what we're looking for so you get that perfect practice with every single repetition. 
if you're more of a veteran lifter and these are not very new, then we want to work up to anywhere from 10, 15, 20 repetitions. Not heavy weight, but we're just looking for a good, clean pattern and try to build some endurance in the legs as well as the feet, the ankles, and the whole lower extremity. If you haven't gone back to the first four videos, go back, clean that stuff up first before we start doing this so you can enjoy running. And I know for a lot of people, it's a new hobby everyone's taken up, but let's run pain-free.